a delightful, fun episode leading into the two-parter finale. Rogue takes the Doctor and Ruby on a journey back to 1813 in Regency-era England. But don't expect just another historical romp. Rogue blends together the worlds of period drama and sci-fi in a really unique way. The story kicks off at a lavish ball hosted by the proud Duchess of Pemberton. With its elegant costume, gossiping nobles, an undercurrent of scandal, it has all the trappings of something like Bridgerton. But then alien shapeshifters enter the picture with a plan to essentially cosplay and take over the world. Battling these bird-like villains called the Chulger are the Doctor and Ruby, as always, but they're not alone. The episode introduces a new character who really shakes things up the roguish bounty hunter known only as Rogue, played by the charming Jonathan Groff. Right from his first mysterious appearance, Rogue locks horns with the Doctor in a clash of personalities that generates some serious sparks. Their back and forth banter and growing chemistry ends up forming the emotional core of this adventure. So settle in as we break down all the period drama antics, examine Rogue's role, and look at how this episode forges new ground for queer representation in Doctor Who. Things are about to get steamy. The Bridgerton connections, one of the most immediately striking things about Rogue is just how hard it leans into evoking the popular Bridgerton series. If you have not seen the series, this could all be a bit much. From the lush Regency era setting in exquisite period costumes to the focus on scandals and courtship rituals of 19th century high society, the resemblances are hard to miss. The costuming in particular is just gorgeous, with the Doctor and Ruby looking dashing in their formal 1813 attire as they navigate the Duchess of Pemberton's lavish ball. The background details like the opulent rooms, grandiose dances, dramatic courtyard scenes it all screams Bridgerton in the best way. But the references don't stop there. The music in Rogue also tips its hat to the Netflix hit. During key dramatic beats, we get classical renditions of modern pop songs like Billie Eilish's Bad Guy and Lady Gaga's Poker Face playing in the background. It's a really fun, tongue-in-cheek parallel that almost makes you wonder if the production team binged a few too many episodes of Bridgerton while making this one. That self-aware humor is part of the charm, though, and allows for black nobles to exist. At the same time, you could accuse Rogue of perhaps leaning a bit too heavily on drawing those comparisons as a narrative crutch at points. The constant callbacks do start to feel a tad excessive and over the top after a while. Still, as an amusing vehicle to subvert expectations and give the alien children villains an amusingly meta motivation as Regency cosplayers, the Bridgerton inspirations generally work. They create a strong sense of tonal cohesion and allow for some great satirical commentary on obsessive pop culture fandom. The Rogue character. While the Bridget and Parallels provide a fun backdrop, the real scene stealer of Rogue is the mysterious new character himself, the roguish bounty hunter played by Jonathan Groff. From his very first appearance surveying the Duchess's ball, Rogue cuts an undeniably dashing figure with his brooding presence and an air of danger. When he finally crosses paths with the Doctor, the two quickly establish a wonderful opposites attract dynamic. The Doctor is all manic energy and charisma, while Groff brings a cool sense of calm and control to Rogue. Yet you can also see hints of sensitivity beneath that assured exterior as Rogue opens up about his life of isolation hunting cosmic threats. Their back and forth has just the right blend of flirtatious chemistry and antagonistic tension that makes you immediately invest in their relationship's potential. Whether they're bantery, bickering, or bonding over their respective losses, Groff and Gatwa share an electric screen presence. In that way, Rogue does evoke memories of past fan favorite charming Rogue character, Captain Jack Harkness. He has that same combination of suave daring and emotional vulnerability that made Jack so beloved. But where Captain Jack could be over the top, Rogue maintains a grounded, naturalistic quality. His feelings for the Doctor unfurl in a slow burn rather than being overly sexualized or campy. It makes their connection land as more profoundly romantic. And that tenderness between them pays off in a major way with their climactic dance, almost kiss, and Rogue's ultimate heroic sacrifice to save Ruby. It's a heartbreaking yet beautifully played arc that has fans already desperately hoping for Groff's return. With a doctor now in possession of Rogue's ring and those faithful words finally hanging in the air, 
It certainly seems like this isn't the last we'll see of the dashing bounty hunter. One can only hope, because Jonathan Groff is an utterly winning addition to the Doctor Who universe. The Doctor's new flirtatious side. While Rogue may be a charming romantic lead, he has some stiff competition in that department from Gatwa's take on the Doctor himself this season. One of the most distinctive aspects of Gatwa's performance has been leaning into the Doctor's flirtatious side in a way not really seen since the days of the Tenth Doctor. There's a frankly delightful lack of subtlety to how Gatwa plays those coquettish moments. Whether he's teasingly referring to Ruby and others as babes and honey, or unleashing that smoldering gaze, Gatwa injects the Doctor with an overt sensuality and confidence that borders on swaggering at times. You can see it from his very first encounter with Rogue on the balcony. The lingering looks, probing questions about whether Rogue travels alone, playful banter about his jacket Gatwa is absolutely working some of those flirty moves. And it culminates in that show-stopping dance scene, where the Doctor takes command of Rogue ship stereo to mouth along to Kylie's can't get you out of my head in an unabashedly campy flirtation display. On one level, you can argue this overtly coquettish approach doesn't necessarily gel with the alien oddity that underlies the Doctor's persona. But on another level, having the Doctor openly embrace and lean into their sexuality and romantic appeal makes perfect sense. We are talking about an ancient, enlightened being who has shrugged off so many societal norms around gender. By that same token, previous Doctors like the Tenth locked into a more conventional lattish brand of flirting. Gawa's take opens up new dimensions to the Doctor's romantic autonomy that feel very true to the character's core. So while your individual mileage may vary, there's no denying that the flirtatious energy Gatwa brings has been a big part of what's made this season so engaging and buzzworthy so far. The Queer Representation Of course, we have to talk about the major milestone that Rogue represents for LGBTQ plus representation on Doctor Who. This episode didn't just tease or hint at queer themes, it went all the way with an explicit romantic storyline between the Doctor and Rogue. From their first charged meeting, the chemistry between Gatwa and Groff crackles with a distinctly romantic energy. Their banter and meaningful looks read as full-on flirtatious foreplay building to something more. And that something more arrives in two honestly jaw-dropping scenes. First, their incredibly sensual dance at the ball where the world seems to fall away around them, as Rogue even gets down on one knee in a quasi-proposal moment. But then, in the climactic twist, Rogue pulls the Doctor in for an undeniably romantic and passionate kiss as he sacrifices himself to save Ruby. This isn't a cheeky peck or teasingly plausible deniability, it's a full-on queer love story brought to life. For a show that has been accused of queer baiting in the past, notably with the charged but unfulfilled relationship between the 13th Doctor and Yasmin Khan, this is a monumental leap forward in representation. By letting this romance between two male identifying characters breathe and develop so authentically, Doctor Who firmly establishes the Doctor's pansexual identity in a way never done before on the show. It's a powerful statement. The significance of having that publicly, unabashedly gay kiss as the passionate culmination shouldn't be understated. It continues this season's incredible strides in LGBTQ visibility alongside moments like the Doctor's trans companion Rose in The Star Beast, though that could have been done better. While queer fans have long embraced and projected themselves onto the iconically gender-fluid Doctor, to see that identity finally reflected outright on screen in such a romantic context is incredibly validating and meaningful. Rogue's introduction marks Doctor Who fully cementing itself as a visibly, proudly queer science fiction icon for a new generation in an era of revived culture wars over LGBTQ representation. That commitment to progressively inclusive storytelling feels genuinely groundbreaking and vital. The villains the children. While the romantic storyline between the Doctor and Rogue understandably steals the spotlight, we can't overlook the delightfully campy villainy of the children. These bird-like shapeshifters are a fun mix of creepy and comedic from their very introduction, and definitely an improvement on the farting politicians. When we first see Lord Barton and the Duchess shed their human guises, revealing feathery heads and disturbingly animalistic features, it is just the right blend of an unsettling body horror vibe and a slightly ridiculous tongue-in-cheek quality. 
That tone extends to the children's overstated mustache twirling villainy. They aren't deep or complex antagonists, but they don't need to be. The way the Duchess in particular relishes her diva rantings and ostentatious costume reveals plays perfectly into the overt theatrical camp of it all. Their very motivation to essentially cosplay and take over 19th century English society is amusingly meta in itself. It allows the soldier to both parody obsessive pop culture fandom, never actually making fun of the fandom, while still presenting a legitimate world-ending threat with their plan to wage global war. So while they may not be the most developed or nuanced villains, the soldiers still prove a vibrant adversary. Their unique bird monster design is distinctive and memorable and their theatrical. Flamboyant antics provide the ideal tonal counterbalance to the more grounded emotional resonance of the Dr. Og romance at the story's core. The children ensure that even when Rogue goes to some powerfully moving romantic places, it never loses that vital sense of fun and quintessential doctor who whimsy that keeps it an entertainingly quirky sci-fi romp. Ruby's parallel story, while the Doctor's romantic dalliance with Rogue drives the main narrative thrust, the episode also spotlights Ruby's continued growth and importance as the companion. For much of the runtime, Ruby is separated from the Doctor, following her own intriguing subplot. We see her both shrewdly navigating the social politics of the Duchess Ball and making insightful observations about the strange occurrences around her. From showcasing her intelligence by quickly fighting off a soldier wanting to cosplay as her, to standing firm in her modern, feminist beliefs when challenged by misogynistic figures like Lord Barton Ruby cements herself as nobody's damsel in distress. Her big heroic moment comes when she purposefully cosplays as a soldier cosplaying her, hoping to upset their plans somehow. It's a savvy, selfless move that results in her briefly being caught in the transporter trap alongside the villains. And in those tense final moments, Ruby's pleading eyes and adamant reassurances that she isn't a soldier herself beautifully reinforce the depth of trust and platonic intimacy she now shares with the Doctor. For a moment, I thought the finale would be about finding and rescuing her from the dimension of the toy maker. THT said, even though her role is relatively minor compared to the Doctor of Romance here, Rogue continues to skillfully utilize Ruby as far more than just a passive bystander. She's an active, engaged partner in these adventures whose voice and choices increasingly shape the narrative in vital ways. Speculation and theories. Of course, one of the biggest lingering questions after the emotional climax of Rogue is whether we'll actually see Jonathan Groff's dashing bounty hunter again this season. The hopeful signs seem to be there. Not only did Rogue explicitly tell the doctor, find me, before sacrificing himself, but the Doctor is now wearing Rogue's ring, a powerful memento linking them together. In the world of Doctor Who, twin objects like that almost always end up being crucial to reuniting lost characters. So it would be surprising if Rogue didn't make another appearance, especially with two huge episodes still left to wrap up the season's overarching storyline where, I am sure, timelines will be fractured, alternate realities visited. Could Rogue's origins and mission be more directly tied to the schemes of the one who waits? Was he put there by the twist we will meet in the end? With rumors swirling that twist may be playing an incarnation of the Veilyard and evil distillation of the Doctor's darker self, it's tantalizing to imagine how Rogue could end up factoring into it all. Perhaps he holds some key to stopping the Veilyard. Though I don't really buy into the Veilyard theory. Unless, of course, Veilyard is now a product of an earlier bi-generation. No, he isn't. Regardless of the specifics, it certainly feels like the introduction of Rogue opens up a whole new narrative arena ripe for exploration across the final two episodes and in future seasons. Whether stuck in another universe or dimension, returning as an ally or antagonist, or somehow caught in the middle of the larger twist, we haven't seen the last of Groff's fan-favorite character. The stage is set for Rogue and the Doctor's romance to burn even brighter or be extinguished in catastrophic fashion when all is said and done. Only two more episodes remain to find out which path their star-crossed story ultimately takes. Whether you're a passionate Doctor Who fan or a more casual viewer, there's no denying that Rogue stands out as a truly memorable and groundbreaking entry in the show's incredible 60-year legacy. From a pure entertainment perspective, it delivers exactly the kind of charming, quirky, 
yet deep sci-fi adventure we've come to expect. The writing is sharp and witty, deftly balancing self-aware humor with genuine emotional resonance. The production values are impeccable, with the period setting and costuming transporting us right into a vibrant Regency fantasy realm. And the cast across the board is simply stellar, with standout performances from the charismatic dueling leads of Gatwa and Groff as they kindle an unexpectedly affecting on-screen romance that will go down as an iconic Doctor Who pairing. But beyond just being rollicking good fun, Rogue is a pivotal landmark for representation and progressively inclusive storytelling on the show, finally catching up to where the sci-fi genre is. By finally depicting a canonically, unambiguously queer romantic storyline for the traditionally pansexual doctor, this episode smashes through long-standing barriers and paves the way for so many more authentic LGBTQ narratives in Doctor Who's future. Queer fans have an invigorating new icon to celebrate in Gatwa's brazenly, unapologetically flirtatious take on the beloved Time Lord. So while Rogue reflects the shifting cultural attitudes, it does so with impeccable grace balancing its social significance with pure, joyful entertainment. It's masterclass from the revived Doctor who is seamlessly weaving meaningful representation into a delightfully escapist romp. With so many tantalizing threads left dangling regarding Rogue's potential return, the Susan Twist appearances, and the omnipresent Pantheon threat the stakes are now higher than ever heading into the season's two-part finale. Saddle up for one last thrilling ride through time and space, because if Rogue is any indication, the journey is sure to be out of this world.